and welcome to Walker Tea Review. I'm Jason Walker here to look at teas that uh, hopefully are teas that are something to uh, appreciate, something to admire for their, for the you know the, the talent of the craft of the tea. Not to, not. I mean, of course, there's talent and there's craft in blends. There's craft in uh, tisans, uh, but I'm talking about just kind of simple, basic leaf. Uh, and really bringing out the best of that leaf as it is itself. So I'm scooping out enough uh, tea. I've got a teaspoon here. I've got about a three ounce gaiwan. And I want to cover the bottom inch to inch and a half, the bottom surface of my gaiwan, uh, just a wee bit more. That looks good. Talk about this tea in just a moment. Let me set that to the side just for a second as I add my water. It's been brought to an early boil. It's been uh, cooling for about a, uh, a little under a minute. I'm going to add enough water so that a little bit will rest above the rim of my lid. Creates a nice seal so that uh, color change doesn't occur in the liquor. So let me push those leaves out away so they don't get caught under the lid. And while that's uh, steeping for a moment, let's talk about this tea. This is from Tea Viver. This is a Dragonwell green tea, or a Longjing, as you may know it. Of course, it's a Chinese green. You can get three and a half ounces for $6.90 currently on the TV River website. It is from the Shi uh, West, that is West Lake area of Hangzhou. Uh, you can actually talk about the Longwu village uh, to get into more precise detail. And uh, they actually give the manufacturer information, the Jiang Nanchun Tea Industry Company. So that's where you can find this information. Production date of, and these, I'm, you see me looking down because I'm showing you that I'm reading from the actual package label. This is provided when you get your tea. or You can find it on this, this similar label. Uh, this production date was April 3rd, 2011, so we can actually find out quite a bit about this tea. Uh, that's actually before, so this is before the uh, Qingming Festival, okay, Qingming being uh, April the 5th. So while my lid's rattling around, moving around because of the uh, pressure there, talk about this tea and the dry leaf for a moment. So go ahead and... What you notice is that uh, when you get a TV River package, outside is sealed, so you've got a zip, zip top uh, bag here. On the inside, it was sealed yet again. So this was probably by the uh, by that manufacturing, that tea industry company that I mentioned created this, and then TV River puts it in their packaging. So that the problem is if you if you cut open a sealed inner package like this, how do you close it up and keep it fresher? Uh, well, that's the solution of the outer package here with the zip top uh, lid or closure here. So let's go ahead and talk about this leaf. First off, I want to get a look at the get a smell here. So this one is getting more of a how should I say kind of a uh, toasted lightly toasted rice. Um, some people might say, oh, this smells a little bit like a, a, a roasted chestnut. So there are these kind of toasty, nutty type components here. Yet sweet. Um, uh, you could also think about a lightly roasted cashew that still has some kind of nutty sweetness to it. Pulling out a few of these leaves, I'm just going to use my fingers here. Put them in my hand for a moment and just look. These are pressed flat like you often expect um, of a dragon well. Although some, although this one is a larger, uh, not the most, not the youngest, not the most uh, immature uh, leaves. These are a bit uh, larger. They're a bit uh, fuller in size. They're a bit. They are deeper green in color, so they get more of a bluer green. While the, those younger. Uh, leaves can often be kind of a palish, uh, light green, almost slightly yellowish. These these leaves again bigger, darker in color. Um, you can kind of see some. Sometimes you get some leaf pairs here. So for example, I'm holding up one now. Sometimes they're individual leaves, or sometimes it's a leaf folded, young leaf, younger leaf folded inside of a 
of, a, of an older leaf that they, they have, they've been kind of folded together and pressed and pan seared. Um, so not the youngest, not the most uh, immature, not the most, not the finest grade that you may be able to get. Um, yet has some kind of pleasant, uh, like I said, toasty, nutty com elements to it. Yet still, still sweet, not a dull flat. And again, these are richer green in color, not too dull, not too overly yellowed, not too, uh, not not as if too much heat, an excessive amount of heat has been applied, or that any. Uh, bruising took place and oxidation may have occurred or I should say unnecessary yeah un unnecessary or unex unlooked for unsought oxidation so I'm going to go ahead now and uh, pour this and then be able to talk about the uh, the wet leaf after that okay so there's my pour and go ahead and give these wet leaves a smell first First off, I got some kind of um, wet, uh, I'm sorry, lima bean type of smell or even kind of a overly cooked green bean type of smell. So there's some green component there. As it moved back, um, some of the nutty components started to come out secondly. Um, then that's more like a, not quite a roasted peanut, more like a cashew, more like a, um, you can get some roasted chestnut to, or even boiled chestnut that has this kind of smell. Those are, those are the dominant aromas. On, on, on the lid, you get a little bit of a lighter green, uh, kind of a sugar snap pea type of uh, sweetness there. So that's you. That might come out more as this tea cools. So I'm going to kind of move on from there for now. Maybe come back and smell that. We'll see if it's worth doing or not. So now let me pull out a few of these leaves. I'm clearing off my, my lid here inside my lid to pull out a few leaves. Here is a leaf that is connected to a little bit of stem. So when grating teas or sometimes with teas you you someone can hand sort or e or even go through and uh, trim off the base so that uh, there's more leaf and less of the stem component. This one has a little bit more of the stem component attached to a leaf, so there's a full leaf. You get little tinges here and there of a little bit of brown, a lot right around the jagged teeth there of, the, of these leaves. Um, like I said, you get some, okay, here's an example of, I think, let me make sure that there's how they're stuck together. Okay, a leaf. I've got at least one, two leaves and a bud there connected. Again, some brownish tinges on the jagged teeth edges of these leaves, indicating a little bit of oxidation may have taken place. Um, let me pull out. Uh, you do have some just kind of nearly, com nearly, I'd say, pieces that are almost completely stem, which is not necessarily the highest grade of quality uh, it, from this, from the appearance here. Uh, another set. So I'm actually finding more leaf, two leaf and bud sets than I expected to, uh, although there are plenty of, uh, and there are plenty of other individual leaves. So sets may make up, um, you know, just at a quick glance in this particular cup, 20% uh, or so. As this is cool, yes, it does get a little bit sweeter, a little bit closer to a sweet pea type of smell. But I'm going to move on now, talk about this liquor, give it a swirl here, move it up to the light, and you have a, a light, palish, uh, pale-ish, I should, yeah, that's the key, golden color there. Got some good brightness to it. Let me pour. Toasty notes. Toasted, lightly toasted rice notes. If you've ever used a rice cooker and you got a little bit of rice that sat down on the bottom around the edges and it, it got it dried out a little bit more than the, the, the center that was stayed moister. 
there's that kind of uh, dried out, almost beginning to toast type of rice smell. Now, what I'm getting so far is, again, toasty notes. Um, the texture here gets with the, the astringency works well with the texture here to give it kind of thick, um, brothy type feel to the mouth, which is, which is very pleasant. Um, aftertaste continues to have some of that kind of lightly toasty, sweet uh, component there. So um, if you are inclined to like genma cha, from a Japanese genma cha, you might want to consider something like this because there are some uh, similar, if not, uh, and or complementary components here. Um, as, a, as, a, as a dragon oil, it's not overly astringent. Uh, Off-camera steepings, I, I steeped it even longer uh, just to kind of pull out everything that I could out. And yes, it, it can get excessively astringent. Well, I, it can get more astringent. Uh, comparatively, it was still not as astringent as, and harsh as, as some others that I've tasted. So, it did. It's still a fairly decent or better quality than some of the others I've been exposed to. And underneath that toastiness, you can still draw out something that hints at a a green sweetness, a, a sweet pea. Uh, that sugar snap pea, something in there, maybe even like a snow pea type component. It's underneath, it's lighter, it's gentler, but it is there. So when I look at this tea, I, and as far as dragon wells go, yes, it's not the youngest, the freshest, the most delicate leaves, yet um, it's, got, it's got that other, that other realm, which is a little bit more toasty, a little bit... Uh, thicker broth, a little bit, a bit uh, richer in that uh, mouthfeel and, and taste component. So um, I would actually give this tea, I'd give this tea a, I'm, I'm torn here, I'm going to give this tea a 91. It's got some nice components to it, like, so it's, it's worth checking out. Again, it, it wasn't, it was difficult to really mess up. So come back to Walker Tea Review to find those teas that are those teas that show craft and are worth appreciating in and of themselves.